Welcome to Industry Chat, everyone. Hello, Chris yeah, Warren are you impressed? from Texas. Are you impressed over there? I, I am, see the impression am, on your face. I am very impressed. Yeah, I see it. I it's very fun. It's nice. He does this. He, Joe, he loves Joe, it. The only reason it's the only re reason he agreed to sit down at the table yeah. at all with us. Joe, 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 Joe over just here. give me a little more of that, though. I want to hear the stylophone like at its at its peak. I mean, two chords. I'm sure David David Bowie did it better, probably, but definitely. I I literally <laughs> only touched this thing for that amount of time. That's what you yeah. said. That's <laughs> what you said. <laughs> I never practiced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also what she well. Said. Welcome everybody to Unorthodox she Film Podcast Industry Chat. Uh, we have with us tonight Chris Warren. Chris, welcome. Howdy. And then of course we've got uh, Joseph. Myself, Bradford, and Quinn hanging out over here with us. Um, hello, everybody. Hoorah. Hello, hello. All right. Hello. Um, today, we're going to talk about ADing. Mm. The first assistant director. Yep. yep. Why are we going to talk about that? Who has any knowledge on that? Uh, I don't know. Chris does. Oh, my. Chris does. Oh, how many my. years? How many years have you been in AD, Chris? I have been AD. AD. The sergeant of yeah. the set. Yeah, I've been in AD for fifteen years. Fifteen long yeah, years. Twelve full time, but yeah, fifteen total. Well, the other ones count too. They do. They just they they, they all equally take away life. Uh, that they do. <laughs> As I so, uh, for our listeners, I felt your like that. That was refreshing. Thank you for me. I can, it's not refreshing because it's, it's, it's made its way over to me. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate for you. That is very unfortunate. I'm still Sorry, feeling bro. the relief Sorry, that you right? got from that. Like, that was, yeah. I'm, I'm guilty. So uh, now I'm just okay, on the receiving end. Now I've got end. it. Yeah. Now I've got it. Yep. Yeah, no, see? The room is smaller than it it's looks It's wafting like. in. How's the, how's the hot and spicy Onion, cheeses? Onions. I would have onions preferred to eat ketchup. them myself. Yeah. Okay, now I'm, thinking, <laughs> now I'm thinking the tuxedos are fucked up. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Uh, so, Chris, describe to us, uh, if you could, what the, uh, uh, you don't have to yes. do the resume sure, version, sure. but um, kind of tell us a little bit about what a first AD does on set. I mean, to be real simple with it, right, like, so the I, the thing that everybody mixes up is there is such a thing as an assistant to the director. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. They are literally there for the director to make sure they don't have to leave set. They can be creative. They can stay in the creative, right? A first assistant director, not assistant to the director. But or the director's director. assistant. Yeah. Correct. But a first assistant director is actually <clears throat> a guy that handles all the logistics, or girl, could be. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Usually is. Um, no, actually, believe it or not, it is. A lot of girls. Oh, there are a lot of women. Yeah, there are, actually, a lot of there are a lot of females. Are first oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that are actually probably better at it. Really good. In a lot of ways. I, I highly recommend um, for anyone listening to pick up Liz Gill's book. Mm -hmm. She is an AD. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called um, Running the Show. Running the Show. Yep. Running the Show. Um, highly highly recommend picking that up. I've read it. I love it. You yep. just um, passed your copy off to... Uh, I did just hand it off to uh, a newer AD so that she could read you. So, if I remember right, there's another book out there. I think it's called Mr. Spielberg, We're Ready for You. I yes, it's, it's hard to find. It's very hard to find, but it's an amazing, I have a copy. It's Do you? a very, very amazing book about being a first AD and what that actually entails. And right. talk, yeah, because there is um, surprisingly it. little information out there really that you can find to aid you in, in becoming an AD. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so break it down a little bit. What are some of the responsibilities that an AD has? On so set? safety is number one, right? That is mm -hmm. our biggest, that's one of our biggest jobs. We have to make sure everyone stays safe on set. Um, that includes, you know, running the thing that everybody mocks me for, but I will continue to say it in every safety meeting is make sure you drink fucking water Yeah, because hydration is a thing. <clears throat> exactly. Right. Hydration is a thing. It just is your body needs fucking water. I right? mm -hmm. hate to tell you, especially with, with the hours we work, right? Yeah, not gonna go off on a tangent, but yeah, enough said. Um, we, we've talked about we work weird listen hours. Listen to your yeah. vessel. Yeah. yeah, so feed it, hydrate it, <clears throat> exactly. Sleep, rest when you're given that. Ten one, ten two. Exactly. But like even with stunts, even with firearms, all that stuff, we're involved, right? Mm -hmm. We are involved. It's our job to make sure everyone's being safe and doing the right thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Not doing something stupid that they shouldn't be doing. That includes literally like seeing. They bring a guy on for stunts, right? I've had this happen. They bring a guy on for stunts that they found off the street. They're like, hey, like, this guy's interested. He really wants to do it. 
He's too fucking jittery. You can see it. Yeah. He's too anxious. He, he really wants to go and sell it, right? That's how someone gets hurt. That's how someone gets hurt. Yeah. So, um, so the reality is that the first AD's job doesn't actually start on set. It does not. I know it's a little bit it boring, but we do on this show talk a lot about pre-production. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit to our listeners? We've talked a little bit about it sure. uh, from my experience. But... Boring for those non-set junkies. Yeah. So um, pre-pro is a thing, right? Like, we all know that. Um, pre-pro can range, right? Depends on your budget, depends on what you're doing. Um, I've had anywhere, I'm, in fact, I'm probably going to do another movie in the fall that's going to be like six weeks of prep, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, I'll be on in location, on location for six weeks doing prep. <clears throat> now, that's before, I'm even, before that, though, I'm building the schedule. I'm making sure everything's right, atoning yeah. to our actors, right? Because that's part of our job as well, is building mm -hmm. the schedule and saying, okay, this is what we are going to do. This yeah. is how we will achieve every day on. Right. What is what <clears throat> is building a schedule? I know it's it's it's, it's it is as simple right, as it right. sounds, but there is more, more to, to it. it. Right. So, so what what goes into what's something that that you have to consider when building a schedule? What are some of the parameters? Details? Yeah, sure. Um, so, like you know, the, the script is your Bible, right? It's mm -hmm. our Bible. It's what tells us how the movie's going to be made and what's happening. Right yeah. now, granted, some of the details aren't there because we have to talk to the DP, we have sure. to talk to the director, get the shots, know what we're looking at, right? But as my years of experience have gone on, I can look at the script and break it down and go, okay, and that includes tagging it for props, tagging it for locations, tagging mm -hmm. it for set deck, tagging it for wardrobe, yeah, special effects, creatures, whatever. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> um, you tag all that. Yeah. Animals, vehicles, yeah, everything, everything, anything you see on screen has been tagged by the AD in the script. Yes. Like, if it's mentioned it's in specifically schedule. in the script, it's important. It has to be noted because if it's not tagged, exactly. it doesn't end up on the call sheet. It and doesn't end up what on the department is responsible and it may not for even, it. And it may not even arrive on set. Like it doesn't right. even matter well, what, what department so it belongs to, but it yeah. may not even arrive on set if you don't have it in there. And right. I didn't know I was supposed to bring that gray shirt today. Right. And if you don't have it in there, then you have a bunch of angry people coming to you going, why isn't this on the call sheet? Mm -hmm. Right. What yes. is uh, uh, the AD's most important qu uh, uh, commodity? That's an interesting question. It's mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah, it's time. It's, it's time. time. And and if something's not on set, then then now we're spending we're time. We're spending more time. Right. We're right. wasting time. We're right. We're wasting time, which, <clears throat> as we all say, time equals money. It mm -hmm. is. It does. In the producer's eyes, time equals money. And yep. the more time we waste, the more money that's wasted. Right. Yep. You don't want that. Um, but to go back to the scheduling thing really yep. quick. Right. Um, so basically how that happens is I get a script. You know, producer, line producer normally sends me a script and says, hey, I've got the script. Uh, I want to do it in four weeks. You know, um, I have this actor attached. We need to make sure he's consecutive, blah, blah, blah. We're reaching out to this other actor, but don't worry about that yet. Right. That kind of conversation mm -hmm. happens. And real quick, just for the listeners, consecutive yeah. means? Consecutive means uh, like uh, no hold within days. a week, no hold days. Nobody, mm -hmm. they're not sitting. They're Schedules not sitting, back to right. back to back. Right. So they're not sitting in a hotel for a day or two exactly. unused. Exactly. Now, granted, that can span over a weekend, right? Because we work five twos. Mm -hmm. Like, we work five days on, two days off. Mm -hmm. So, consecutive can be hold days, but it's on the weekend, right? right. Not actual work days. Right. So, um, you, don't want, you don't want a four-week schedule where you've got somebody scheduled week one and week four. Absolutely not. Especially if they're named. Like, you right. absolutely do not want that, right? Um. So basically, once that happens, then I go into Final Draft. If they have Final Draft, I know there's a million other script writing softwares mm -hmm. out there. Um, but I I love a Final Draft document because it's so much easier in the software. Yeah, and if not, I usually just take the PDF that they send me and convert it to a Final Draft. Final Draft does a good enough job of yeah. reading the format as long as it's been properly. Totally. Properly formatted. Totally. So Are you going to say something? I was just looking at that. Oh, okay. okay. You're allowed to do that. So... <laughs> So then basically after that, once I've tagged everything, I then export it into Movie Magic, which once again, I know there's a million other softwares out there, but I hate to tell you guys, Movie Magic is still the industry. It's still yeah. the industry standard. Like yep. people yeah, expect to see Movie Magic. Dozens of softwares out there, but if it's not Movie Magic or Studio Viper, exactly. 
Yeah. Studio and Binder even, is still a second. No, it's still a second. Yeah, and I honestly don't like Studio Binder, quite honestly. They just made some working either, in it now. Yeah. There's some changes. I don't changes. even use it. I don't like yeah. seeing it come from it. Yeah, they made like, some ah. changes that make, it's just, it's not as, it's not as expansive as like as it was. Right, right. It's ridiculous right now. And but. quite on, like, I'm just not, a, I wasn't a fan of it to begin with. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the idea of I can send this out and I can see who's read it because they have to open it. And mm-hmm. I can also send a text with it. That's great. Well, I I like some of the integration features of Studio Binder. Unfortunately, I don't think it's uh, maximized the use because if all departments don't use it the way it's supposed to be, then it's all on you, and it's just it's what Precisely. what is supposed to save you time costs you more. Costs you more, right? And that's why I don't like it. And Movie Magic, truthfully, is it's just solid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's been solid for years. Um, so once that's done, I go in, I start building the schedule. You know, I know my dates. I know when we're going to shoot. Yada yada yada. <clears throat> and I start building it out. And basically from there, we continue on, right? We all, well, our listeners probably don't know, but the schedule is a living, breathing thing, right? Right. It it's always, always changing. It's always changing. So when you've, when you've so, gone through the time that it takes to, to develop the schedule, mm-hmm. um, that then gets sent off to your department heads, right? Uh, well, first it goes back to the line producer, right? Correct. In, in, a, in a situation like that, it'll go back to the line producer and the director. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and possibly the DP as well. Um, they'll look it over, right? Any notes they have will adjust, right? Obviously, this is before we've done tech scouts, we've done anything, right. right? This is just a rough schedule of what I think is the best moves, not knowing anything other than what is on the paper, right? Correct. So this is it. Boom, send it off. Once they approve, yes, we start flying it to heads. They start seeing a schedule that, like, this is what our plans are. Mm hmm. Now, once again, the living, breathing thing, right? Yeah. Everybody gotta, has opinions. Let's take it back to that living, breathing thing. So, like, when I said, oh, somebody forgot the gray shirt, right? So, the, that right there, just as simple as one piece of wardrobe. Right. We need that for this next scene that's in the schedule. Right. So, this living, breathing organism. Now, you have to move this. to. Oh, it's going to take an hour for the shirt to get here. What can we get done in that hour that's on the schedule without losing that time? Exactly. Yes, correct. Exactly. And that's where the AD really shines. Yeah, and we'll get to that. So to, let's to an extent. Fast fast forwarding yeah. a little bit. Fast forwarding a little bit through pre production. Um, we'll get to that on set for sure. I want to yeah. come back to that. So yeah. ultimately, because you, you got chain of command, and then you got right. the approvals, right. and then things may change because the location you had set right, right, is right. now not here, and you right. got to move things around. So there's some right. of that sliding happening even before crew gets it and gets on set. We're already there's a, there's a we're, lot of we're adjusting a it's lot. A, it's a jigsaw first. puzzle yeah, that's every, just every always Every department moving. checks in and there's an adjustment. Because right. every department has an opinion. Like, right, so like they may look at it and go, because right, it takes a village. We all yeah, know that. It course. takes a village to make a film. So basically, like I call it, making movies with friends. Yeah. That's the reality. Collaborative art. Right. Yeah. yeah, making movies with friends. I, we should so start a podcast. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, basically it is... Like a perfect example of that is like, say you're doing this big, bloody, nonsense, crazy creatures, all this other shit, mm-hmm. right? If I schedule something because I'm looking at it for the basis of wrapping out a location, right? But special yeah. effects comes back and says, hey, that doesn't really work for us because of X. Timmy can't have blood yeah. on him or Timmy can't have this appliance on him. And then we strip it off and we put it back on, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, makes perfect sense. So okay, so now I've got to go back in and problem solve and figure out yeah. okay, how do I solve that problem where we still achieve that on the day because we do want to wrap locations out, right? Yeah, you don't want to bounce back to a location it doesn't make any sense. So how do we achieve that and move the schedule around to reflect helping and accommodating all the departments? Right, because right. we have to. Um, so that happens, right? Then once we kind of get to a point where we're happy, um, it goes out, right? Then mm-hmm. we start really prep, which is showing up on, showing up, which normally the AD shows up early, right? With mm-hmm. the DP, with the director, with the producers. Because <clears throat> another thing about ADs, we are, in always all reality, working. we're always working, but we're also, we are the answer. We are the person in between above the line and below the line. That right. is our job. Our mm-hmm. job is to basically be the one that's in charge of making sure that the producer's money is spent correctly right and the and also being able to let the director be creative right yeah while we're focused on the not creative the logistics so let's let's talk a little bit about that so now we're on set um 
you've you've touched about the, the basic you, you, the in between, right? Yeah. You know the above line, the below the line. So and once you get on set, you're the director's stopwatch. I'm, uh, I'm oversimplifying. Yeah, it, that's but, very simplification. Right. Of what so the job is so. Like, could you actually describe uh, the, the test? You know, you're walking on set. It's the start of your day. You know right. going in today. Right. So let's say we've got a call sheet. It's got six scenes on it. Yeah. You've got eight pages. Okay. Right? Um, you know where your lunch is, and, and you know, it's one location. Okay. Take us through kind of like what goes through the mind of the AD or or just getting things going. I mean, like at this point, you, you've laid sure. a map out, right? Sure, yeah. We already have a map. We, th that's what the schedule is. The schedule is a map. It tells us our journey mm -hmm. from A to Z and how to get there, right, to make sure that we don't – we appease the director, we appease the DP, and we make sure we get everything that we want and the producers get everything they want, right? Yeah, right. Like we, we do that, right? That's the point. Um, but <clears throat> the first thing I'm thinking is, okay – my talent for the first scene first scene right we're gonna mm -hmm. block because hey guys this is a new. no no thing. i'm waiting for it this is a real new thing yeah that, take notes here that people have been doing for a long fucking time it's called block, block light, light shoot, shoot. and block, actually it's, light, shoot. to be real it's block light rehearse shoot but block light rehearse tweet SOP, shoot, but baby. we call it standing up block light shoot. we call it block light shoot because it's just easier yeah. and nine times out of ten if we've blocked it already the dp is going to nail it and not have to have tweaks mm -hmm. But there's always that off chance, right? So we have a rehearsal for camera. Also, if it's a complicated move, you have a rehearsal for camera just so that way they can make yep. sure they nail it, right? Yep. Because sometimes they are complicated. You're AC Maybe 10% of shoots I'm on where the camera doesn't rehearse with the actors. Right, right. And they're wrong when they don't. Absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, um, yeah, this new original idea, I don't know. It's been around for years, but we've people, brought it up before. Some people this really don't. This is actually not the first time Block Light Shoot has been on this podcast. Some people really don't understand that, and I'm like, I know guys, it. this is failure. I know this it. is this is the start of failure. Like that's that's where it all. Why falls are we apart. behind? Because we didn't Block Light Shoot. Right, right. Because we did not follow the proper protocol that we have followed well, for. So years. let's you speak on let's speak on that with five times before I even saw a frame. Are exactly. you retarded? Right. So. um Without being too, uh, yeah, vulgar. This, this weekend was perfect. <laughs> tell me, yeah. white block shoot. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's hear it from the. Well, yeah, we, tell we, me from the from the G and E side of things. You know, how, that, how does that benefit you guys? The block light shoot. Well, obviously pre lighting is a thing, but like, you know, there is a lot of times where they basically say, hey, "Go prep the scene," and we're not told really anything besides like it's at the bar or it's on this couch, and we kind of have to guess. And but this is the, the, these sort of things usually happen on very. Like small, very indie sets, usually not well funded, and it's usually but there's not even an AD present to, to maybe not. That but sort so of thing. we are we are openly talking about not a, a difference between using block light shoot versus not, not block. Yeah, yeah. So in the instances that it's not like you can make excuses for it. And, Free lighting and, is amazing, yeah. well, but only if you know where the camera is going to be and where it's right. Not only that, I don't guys. need to see the frame to pre light. I need to know the area. Of the source right. of the, well, like, I didn't know where the lens is going to be. And even to be to be fair to that too, really, what you're doing on that, those instances, you're you're setting a base light. Like you're yeah. basically saying, yes. this is a base light. Mm -hmm. This is what we're we know we're going to rock with. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to tweak it, obviously, once we see camera, right? Right. And it's so, it's it's staying busy until you know, okay, now we exactly. can refine. Exactly. But yeah. I, refining is different than taking the initial setup and moving it six different times because. Right. Where you told me the camera is whole different be, lighting is literally a hundred and eighty degrees right. flip. Yeah, right. And now my lights in your shot when it's where you told me to put it. Exactly. Why didn't you just put the camera up and let show me go? Show me a frame. Yeah. Show me a frame. Like, what 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 emotion do you want and, from the light? And, and how here's, can I do that for right. you? Right. And here's the thing. Right. The other thing too is, and what I'll say about that with blocking, blocking shows the DP where the actors are going to be. Correct. It tells the DP, okay, I know I'm going to have an actor from the door, right? The front mm -hmm. door. He's going to walk to the couch. That tells me I've got to light him to go to the couch. And that's mm -hmm. where the scene plays and out, this right? this is important for audio, too. When right. they have the boom, they need to... Exactly. It's all... It's exactly. this beautiful dance. Yep. It's all important. We all have to be on yep. that page. It's all important. Yeah. But, that's a good point. <clears throat> but the thing is, also, to speak to Jeannie side of it, because I did... Did Genie for years, right before I actually became a Genie for life, um, and still do Genie sometimes. I love to swing the Genie for life. Um, so 
the reality is also like once you do your block you send your talent off guess what you know what really happens and it's a beautiful synchronicity that happens everyone smokes jays that well, not on set um <laughs> so coffee lit- and cigarettes literally Genie. we block it Genie starts working what's our first ad doing he's paying attention to the crew who is making sure everything's happening right mm-hmm. oh here's another thing for detroit this original idea a second ad hmm yeah. So those are important, right? Mm-hmm. You want to know why they're important? Because the first AD can't be in two places at once. Right. Okay. So Somebody talk a little bit. Answer phone calls and emails while not, the magic happens. But not just that. It's not. The it's second, not that. So the briefly, AD has to be there with wardrobe, with makeup. Mm-hmm. Right. I jumped because, ahead again. That's the right. second second. Because okay. when they, so when they're literally, you got to think about. It, you're sending your talent off to what we call the glam squad, right? Mm-hmm. We call them the glam the glam squad. There's no offense to that. No, we love our hair, and hair makeup. makeup I mean, we love our hair and makeup, boys and girls. We love our fucking wardrobe makeup mm-hmm. and wardrobe boys and girls. We do. But the thing is, they're chatty Cathy's, right? Yeah. And it's part of their job. It's part of their job 100%. to get comfortable with the 100%. actors. Because you're touching their fucking face, okay? Mm-hmm. You you're to, in their fucking They grill. need a little more push. Right. You've got to have somebody there who is streamlining and saying, okay, cool, you're out of the chair. Great. Next person. Okay, great. You're out of the chair. Mm-hmm. Right. We're moving it along. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he's going through a line shaking hands, even at a red carpet, he has a guy behind him. Squeeze his arm. Yep. Move That's on. enough. Move Three on. seconds. Move on. Five seconds. Move on. I didn't know exactly. that. That's hilarious. But here's the thing, right? So I'm a, you know, you know this, you, you've been a first mm-hmm. as well. You are a first. The reality is, is that also you're sitting there having a conversation with your second. You're making sure you guys are syncing up. Yeah. Right. Because the reality is, is that it, this is the synchronicity, right? Genie, we all line up. So I'm pushing crew and making sure we're ready. And while the second is off pushing cast, cast yeah. and making sure they're right. ready. Because you know what? At the end of the day, the goal is for us to meet at the you same meet time. Meet in the middle. Correct. Meet at the same so fucking it's a, it's time, a, right? It's a gorgeous, to speak back to your dad, it's a gorgeous ballet of that collaborative art where everybody fits in and dances with each other. Yeah. And, if you can do that right with the right attitude, it, right. it's just the right. funnest thing you can do. Right. It's so beautiful. But it's, that it, one wrong attitude, that's it. That's the wrench in the gear. And so, like, the reality is, is like, <clears throat> now granted, right, we all know, and this is no fucking knock to women, don't take it this way, but we all know it takes longer when they go in well, the There's chair. more to do. There's just more to do. And right? I, honestly, as a man, we walk in, they powder they us, powder they powder and throw you away. I they think might style our hair. Yeah. That's it, right? As yeah. a woman, We've got to make sure they look good. We have to make sure their hair looks good. I don't think right? I've ever spent more than five minutes in hair and makeup. Right. With a woman, it could be, it depends. It could be 30. It could be 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. It depends on what we're doing and yeah. how crazy this gets, right? So there are times we do pre-calls, right? Where mm-hmm. we will pre-call actors in because we know it's going to take a little more time. Especially for special I mean, effects I, makeup. And yeah. Something. I mean, I did a Western, a Western horror film on a fucking train. I mean, we had to do the whole fucking get up on those women's hair. Yeah. It was not, it took time, right? Sure. So we'd have fucking pre-calls that they would just come in to get their hair done. It wasn't even their makeup. It was their hair done. Oh, because like, the period of the Because the piece period of time and the way the curls and everything had to be, it was just insane, right? Yeah. Gorgeous when it's done, but we st- it's still time, right? So Something you, have to you think don't think about. about while watching. Right, and as they an AD, eight hours to do these you have to take all that into your hair. brain, right? Like yeah. You're pre-call- okay, so you're pre-calling to your makeup, you know, your makeup team, depending on how big your makeup team is. You're pre-calling those, the hair, the hair team in, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be ready, and some depending on the show, right? You have to be ready to either get lunch for them early, right, and then right. get ready to release them early, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know that you don't want them to hit OT, no. So you have to be prepared for that, right? <clears throat> or you have another team that's coming in at like a right. ten for hour relief. mark, just or like a six hour mark, and basically they're going to get like a half day pay, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. you know that's what's happening, right? Sure. So that's all things ADs have to think about, though. It's not the producers that are thinking about this stuff. No. It's the ADs that then are letting the producers or letting the you know letting them know, hey, we have to have this stuff or we're not going to make our days. Right. Right. It's very important, and that's that's that goes back to prep. Quite honestly, that's sure that's involved in prep. Yeah, I mean, there's like, no surprises if you if you thought it out. In right. Prep. I I will always say this is that the you're going to spend money one or two ways. You're going to spend more money in prep, and the shoot's going to go fantastic. Right, mm-hmm. you're gonna spend less money in prep, and you're gonna spend a shit ton of money more, probably post, more in in post and in production mm-hmm. because you're trying to catch up. 
right? Yep. Because you're not fully prepared. And that's right? an important distinction. If you don't spend it in pre, you're going to double down on what you didn't say, what you Absolutely. saved. Because there's two more steps. Absolutely. And you what you spend the money now. Right. What you could have spent a little bit, right? Just mm-hmm. getting your AD in and having them come in and be early, as well as your DP and director. With be ready to double down on every dollar having, you think you saved. And having yeah. your having your shots, you know what I mean? Having your shots laid out, knowing what your director's mood board is, knowing what your director's vision is, knowing mm-hmm. what the DP's vision is, and what they're planning for each individual scene, right? Right. Because, like, think about it. If, you're, if your DP's like, oh, yeah, uh, this really, really pretty walk and talk, right? I want a techno crane. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's time. Yeah. Especially if you're on a hill or you're somewhere mm-hmm. crazy right now. Granted, they're on their own movable carts, but it's still time. There's movement of it. There's relocating it. There's setting it up. There's calibrating. Multiple rehearsals to mm-hmm. make sure it's right. Because like, you only have, because after all the setup time, you only have so much time. Exactly. Exactly. So the rehearsals make sure that you can just, let's get this in one, guys. Right. And that's another beauty, right? <clears throat> and, like, to go back to your timekeeping thing, right? Like, that is something we do. That is our job, right? Now, what I like to do in movie magic, I don't know if you do this, um, but I like to actually, I in my head, knowing... Estimate the, the amount of time and shape. Right. If I yeah. know the information, I can say, okay, estimated time, we're going to yeah. look at... Sometimes it's a, an it's, hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. Depends on what it is. It might be the full fucking day. If we're doing right. Stunts. So I, 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 I do two passes. I do two right. passes. I, I put down when I'm doing my initial scheduling of what I think this scene should take mm-hmm. or whatever. But then once I start putting them into days and looking at my page counts, or whatever, and then I look at my estimations, I'm like, right. oh, well, according to what I thought, this is going to take us 16 hours, but you know, how can we, right. How can we approach this differently so that that's not the case? And maybe after talking with the director, you realize the director's really simplified this. It's only going to be, correct. It's only going to be three or four correct. shots. There's right? typically, there's typically a scene that is, uh, you know, sometimes it can be a longer scene, a, a nice three and a half page to, uh, talkie yeah, yeah. with two people. I was like, well, you know, I totally thought I was going to need three hours for this, right. but the director only wants, uh, mediums and close-ups and the, the talent has the lines done. Exactly. We're out. Boom. Done. Hour and a half with setup and we're out. So I, and I genuinely do have conversations with my director about that. I love it when that happens. Like me too. Because if we're on a walk and talk, what's your coverage, man? Yeah. Like, are you really going to want, are you going to live in this two shot as they walk and you maybe do a reverse just to see the, see the world? Right. Or are you going to do, okay, we're going to, we're going to track back and follow them in a two. And then we're going to do a side profile, so profile and behind. Now, if you're going to do all that shit, yeah, that's time. You know yeah. what I mean? But if the director says, oh, no, 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 I'm just going to track back and then I'm going to reverse and just follow behind them. Boom. That's only right. 30 minutes. Now like, you're in you're and out. out. You're out. You know what I mean? Especially on a page. It's like, mm-hmm. boom, done. As long as the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not trying to throw a camera on the bus. But as long as your ACs are ready. And yeah. your focus, your first AC is and, and lighting. I mean, you know, with and something like that, ready. we got to make sure that the, right. there's no shadows. But sound, right. you know, right. s- sound gets introduced to a room where there's nothing but overhead lighting. And exactly. they learn it's a walk and talk. They're exactly. like, well, hold up. Exactly. And the other thing we have to be prepared for on set, right, is things happen. Right. Yeah. It's it's so this is where and this is where Joe was talking about. <laughs> it's cause... Newton's law, right? It is Newton's law. Yeah. It will happen, right? Yeah. Like. Think about it with sunlight, right? But Murphy's what, law. Murphy's law. Sorry, not Newton. Uh, so basically, think about. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put you uh, motion, Newton's make you stay in motion. Yeah. That's so just gravity. Right. So, but but think about it, right? Like the reality is that, like with that shot we did on sunlight, where we were doing this walk and talk, right? It should have been very quick, right? But the problem is, is it wasn't. <clears throat> it had nothing to do with the actors. Well, it kind of did. One of the actors didn't have all his lines memorized. We were dealing with That's that. That's right? typically a That's problem. That's a problem, right? Then, because especially if you're trying to limit yourself to one or two shots, like there's no way to cut exactly if you can't get it in whole. Well, then on top of it all, right? We were having signal sure, interference. Sure, you start in the, in the middle just because the back half, because that's where it fucks up. Right, but we were having signal interference with our with our trans video transmission oh, yeah. for our focus puller and for the person that's actually pulling the wheel on what we were on our not SETI cam, but oh, I can't think of the name of the. Freaking, um, was that on the crane? Uh, the Adam, the the rig he had. Oh um, yeah, his anti grab. Oh, yeah, anti grab. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, like you had to have. It was me, right, mm-hmm. pulling the wheel on that. And you, if I didn't, if I can't see the video, how the hell am I going to know? You what can't I'm, do it. What am I? I don't talking know. about when we were at Luna Pier. 
No. So this is, remember when we broke off in Skeleton Crew and we went to like this hospital thing and we shot a couple yep. things yep. with Tom and yep. Bobby yeah. and them, right? Yep. It was only supposed to be, it was supposed to be really fast. Oh, believe right? me, I was stressing. I know, I know it was too. I know I the whole stressing. G&E that day took a four hour nap because I had a, we yeah, set up still more than we I had a room to. full yeah. of extras for hours. Yeah. Like, well, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Yeah. is kind of here. So, and what, so what happened, right, is we were having video signal issues and we could not, it was just killing us. Like, we could not get our shots, right? It yeah. sucked. And luckily, we finally got through it. But, Mark actually came into the wrestling stuff and was like, okay, I only need this, this, and this. Yeah, right? and we and we plowed through it, and everybody went home. Pumped it out. Right? Yeah. It was still wrapped on time. Yeah. yeah. But it was well, we had to be out of the location by exactly, a very strict time. Exactly. And Mark was like, okay, I only need this, this, and this to really establish this. I only mm-hmm. need this to establish that. Right? He knew exactly what he needed to really get us through that day. Right? Yeah. And we did. <clears throat> and, and Well, and yeah. also, luckily, uh, the stunt the co- the stunt assistant was there mm-hmm. the whole day while you guys were off on first location blocking and she was working with her exactly. her mm-hmm. actors exactly and when the head of stunt showed up he had a different idea but because of the time crunch we couldn't change that it. rehearsal still came in clutch exactly exactly so it was, they it was had really nice to bounce back on right yeah. it was really nice right and so I always look back on days like that that I'm like. Okay, I knew I thought this was going to take this long, but mm-hmm. once again, things happen. And as long as you're willing, and that's the thing, we have to be willing to adapt. You know what I mean? Like right. you can't, you can't put your foot down and say, "Got to be on your toes." Right. And as a director, even you can't put your foot down and be like, "No, I have to." You know, and mm-hmm. I'm your multi million dollar film. Fine, go for it. You know, do whatever you think you need to do to get your shot. Yeah. But <clears throat> on an indie film, we don't have time for that. You know what I mean? We don't have the money for that. So, like, at the re- at the reality of it all, you have to be able to adapt and say, hey, yeah, no, we don't have time for this. Okay, we're going to get this, this, and this. This is, you get your meat and potatoes first. The gravy is extra. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I always tell everybody, right? Like meat- everybody's ready and willing to do the best they can. Let's exactly. get coverage so, that's basic. And then tells the have story. we bought the time to be exactly. One of the challenges. Exactly. And go above and beyond. Exactly. And hopefully our key shot lists and our key things that we know we need have that message enough, have that entertainment value enough. Exactly. If we don't have the time to go extra. Exactly. Some of the challenges that um, I've run into are when you're trying to move forward and, and time is, is creeping and yeah. you, you realize like, okay, we got to get it and we got to get out or we're right. not going to get right. right. Is the pushback uh, because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very logistic job over mm-hmm. being a creative job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So while a part of me is like, yeah, I'd love to get these next five shots y'all have been talking about, but right. like, you know, realistically, we need to get the basic coverage and move out. Like some, sometimes I've been hit with like, oh, you're trying to hurt the integrity of the film, and I'm like, listen, I'm I'm, I'm at a I'm at a crossroads where my choices are: do we get something? Right. Or do we miss out on not getting something altogether? Which, like I can get everything of all the pages, and we just don't get as many as much coverage of it, or right. as much creativity right. to it. But you ate that time, right? Which I can tell you right now, like any producer that's worth their salt is going to want the story. They're not going to care about the creative, right? As long as the story is in the bag, right? That's if what you they miss care pages. About. If you get through a twenty-eight day shoot and there are still ten pages that somehow got fell off. Yep, that's it's not good. That's a problem. It's not good, right? Unless it's been discussed between well, the director and producer. Boneyard like, shit is boneyard right, shit. It like, happens. But right. I mean, like you know, like if this happened and we had to keep pushing, and you know, the, especially in 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 this local industry, you get a lot of well, we'll push it to a, another day, push it to another day. I'm sorry, and that's that's the first mistake you ever it's, make. It's, we already it's don't have first. time. We already don't have time. Exactly. We're putting it where I so didn't have time I, to put it before. Exactly. That's why it's if, here. Exactly. That's why it's here. So I exactly. can tell you. If I was going to put it on Tuesday, I, I would have put it on fucking Tuesday so I can, originally. If Tuesday I can attest okay, to, this, to this to exactly what you're saying with locally as of last weekend. Like literally, they were like, oh, well, this actress, she really, she's cried a lot. She's kind of burned out, right? Um, we need to move this other crying scene to another day. And I was like, Okay, I'm sorry. Like, I appreciate actors and I understand that it can be tough to cry and whatever, right? But, like, as a producer, sorry, I put my producer hat on. Vizine's cheap. 
yeah, uh, sorry, we have to make our fucking day. Like, yeah. like there is no pushing a scene yeah. just because the actor's done. Like, I'm sorry, no. And but they they agreed with the actor, and I told him I said, guys, this is gonna fuck us. And they Peppermint were like, Peppermint extract right here, right, you right. Fuck and they said, guys, this is gonna fuck us. This is gonna fuck us. I kept saying it. Sure, shit. You know, we get into a day and we've added extra scenes to another day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and this is what and we're we talking about hour, earlier. We that's money. Over. Yeah. That's now money because yeah. now, now you can't to shoot one scene because of one actress. You can't forget that in order to get that done, you have to bring in the thirty crew members, right? That are required to do <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. How and that's many the thing. times have one actor or actress, one actora, one thespian put a whole fucking thing on hold for half a day? Oh, I mean, it's a it's, it's a common thing. It, happens. it is. It yeah, is it happens. just it's, it's so your biggest sad. names will do it. But I'll tell you so right sad. now, like Michael Caine, and this is another complaint I've heard recently that I was like, "What the fuck?" She was complaining because she got called in too early, uh, and sorry, I literally, I literally was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Michael Caine has in I think it's in his book or it's it's his writer. Yeah, regardless. Oh, and his no, in his book. his actual book. It's either in his book or he's he's been known to say it that. Literally, he's like, "No, you pay me to wait." Like, yeah, you, you, others have said that as well. You're paying me to wait. Like, yep. that is well, my job. Uh, uh, was it Lawrence Fishburne? Some bear, bear actually yeah, yeah. mentioned a story. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing. It's like I I act for free. Like I, I love this shit. You guys yeah. are just paying me for the, the time yeah. in between. Yeah, I and could that, be doing a lot of stuff, waiting for you to call on me. Right, but I'm here, right, ready, right, for when you put the camera. <clears throat> on as me. soon as you yeah. tell me we are ready for you, yeah, I mean, here they come. And they're yep. gonna. They, feel, that's their job to put I their. I feel A-game the on. same way as a, as a gaffer. Like I, I started off acting and stuff. You know, sure, but like I, I still, I, I see it that same way. Like I, I'm paid to sit and wait for when you're ready for lights to be moved. Right. Because if they're gonna right. be moved and rigged above an actor's head, like it needs to be done right, well, and I can do that. But I'm not there to do that. I'm there to be ready to do that. Right. Well, yeah. And that that's another thing that I think gets skipped over in our job, right? Our job as ADs, when it comes to safety, it's not just on set. It's also thinking about, okay, my genie boys have been busting their ass all fucking day, mm-hmm. right? You want to go into OT now? Right. And we have an hour drive home. The drive home. I was going to say, right. it's not just a drive home. We These just skipped all, over rap. There's right. there's yeah. packing everything that's back what, into the truck. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, there's, there's a million You things. can call rap at 1201, and a good 70% of the people that are on set are gone. Right. Then there's, you've got, you know, sound is still packing and repacking and getting all their shit back together. Exactly. G&E is packing the truck up and tearing things down from rafters and from, you know, windows Everybody and everything who's else. not wrapping out is smoozing for 45 <clears throat> minutes and they're gone and we're still not. Now, up. I would say, I will tell you right now what I always do. And this is, this is, I mean, it's what every first AD should do. You go to your genie team because guess what? They're going to be spending the most time. They'll right be now. the, they'll, sounds, their wheels up are late. Sounds not going to spend the most time, right? Their stuff. Some do. Some do. <laughs> really, truthfully, though, it's not a hard wrap. No. No. 90% they normally have 20 minutes. Norm. But when Should my be. G&E crew pulls up, I leave before sound 95% of the time. Right. Well, but I have the, Well, I, I mean, have it's that depending regiment. on the setup. There's just I some setups. Regiment. There yeah. are just some setups set that... Though. Like, like, let's be real. Like, if you're doing a huge topper, Condor day... Like, topper, it took us some time. I will still yeah. be Matt Cisco out. I guarantee you. Well, there are some toppers. Okay. No hate, Matt. I love you. Okay. Uh, I don't think we beat him any day on topper, but... No. But, yeah. So, what I'm getting at, though, is that I always go to g first, because they're going to have... They're going to quote me the longest time, right? Yeah. Now... Have be, having been in Genie, this is one of the mistakes a lot of ADs Genie made. math. You can call Guess BS. Guess what? Uh, ADs, Genie lies to you. They will I'm always... thinking 45 minutes, 90 yeah, minutes later. Yeah, they will, another 15, that's a 30. They will always <laughs> over-embellish nine times out of ten. They will tell you more time because they want to look good, which is a great thing, right? In Genie world, we want to look good. We want to be faster than yeah. what we quote. But if you ask me how much longer out loud in front of everybody, five minutes, boss. Yeah. Get back to me in 20. Exactly. (laughs) But exactly. But the reality is, is that at the end of the day, if you have that knowledge of what it actually takes, since you don't have to be in genie, you just have to watch your guys work. Yeah. How long it takes. them. Right. I think that's, that's an important thing for any AD or any Brad said the other day, 
He says that when I ask Joe how long, and he says five minutes, it doesn't matter that he needs 15. He can go forward and say five minutes to everybody else. Yeah. And it's going to take 15 for that to come back, and then we are ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so am I lying, or am I just giving you that cushion? You're giving the... For the cushion, baby. Yeah, I mean, you are. But, mm. like, so... Ooh. But to be real, like, right, you watch your team, right? How they yeah. wrap out, right? Now, me knowing what it takes and what's going to happen is a, is a plus. And right? this is what I was saying. I think observation for a lot of different team members on, like, it's... I'm not asking makeup and hair to wash Shani, but if you are uh, AD... UPM, director, mm -hmm. DP, some of these closer to the line. If they, if you aren't paying attention to how a team works and how they go, then it's pretty, it's pretty difficult. For example, when a director comes up and says, why is it taking so long and blah, blah, blah. That comes from not watching over the last week what it takes, the understanding of what is involved in the things that you just asked for. You just asked for us to have red coming in to illuminate. Well, we weren't prepared for that. Right. The team needs to go back, grab the stands, grab the lights, power the cable, find where everything is to make sure that it's ready to go. And then there's the alignment, the calibration right. of the light. Right. So it's like understanding what the other teams do or require is a, a big task for, I, I think, you know, any AD. AD and up. Any AD. I mean, really, and really it does fall on us. Like, it doesn't fall on the other team. You know? No, no. I, um, dude, you got to answer when the we, question we, comes. Right. We I'm recommending it because I think it will give oh, better I scope I to love, understand. I like that. That was, a, that was a different explanation for what he said about, like, you guys are the tightrope between in front. Above, above and below. Above and below the line. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's right. a tightrope walk. Which we are. I mean, and that's the truth. And, like, the reality is, is that when I go to g &E, right, and I know the setup, and I know what we've done, and I'm like, okay, it's going to take probably about 30 to 45 to really wrap out, right, to be taillights. Mm -hmm. So I go to them, and I'm like, what do you think? And if they quote me some ungodly number, I look at them like, really? Come on. Like, that's not real. Like, And they're like, well, I mean, I'm like, no, 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 come on. Like, what's the real number here? Like, well, yeah, because it's G and E. You're gonna yeah. get the sarcastic answer before right. the real one, exactly. especially a rap out. Exactly, and that's your sense of humor. Right. I'm gonna give you all sorts of shit. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, and that's the other thing too, right? So that's another part of our job that I think a lot of people don't understand is that empathy is a big part of every. We position. have to play have to know your people. We have to play dad on set, right? That's yeah. our job. Yeah. Or mom, right? If you're a female, right? Big mama bear. Yeah, we have to be able to walk that line mm -hmm. of, hey, there's gonna be times you're not gonna like me. Because I'm going to tell you things that you don't want to do, but I need you to do. But, yeah. but at the end of the day, you're going to want to drink a beer with me. Yeah. Right. Like yes. at the end of the day, when we wrap, I'm going to come to the truck. You're going to throw me a beer. We're going to. I don't like it, to. You know? I don't like to pose myself as the bad guy. No. I think that there's a choice that some ads you're not. make. Right. But I, I'm I'm in it for you. But understand that, like mom and dad, sometimes I got to make some decisions that you're not going to like. Exactly. But understand that. There's a reason. I'm doing it for the better of us and to exactly. get us out, right? Exactly. And when they see that, the respect is given, right? right? That's the thing. Like, I don't yell on set. Mm -hmm. I don't, unless it's a I safety do. I raise my voice. I, I, mean, well, I guess there's, there's I, sure, I semantics raise, of, yeah, yeah, semantics yeah. of, but like. What I mean by yelling is I'm not like red in the face and yelling I have. At people. Well, I have. Because here's the thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak your piece. Turn your fucking phone off. Sure. Absolutely. I when you say quiet on set, and I've told you 15 phone off. fucking yeah. times, this yeah. is not my story. This is his story. 15 fucking times. But you're telling it. Please. Well, yeah, because he. Go ahead. You're fine. Well, so he's told him enough. Yeah, and the story that I, I don't want to ask you. I don't want to tell the story that he's three about to tell. seconds into a roll, a yeah. phone goes off. Get the fuck off my set. Yeah. Well, I don't care who you are. Boss or not, you fucked up. Why we're here? Sure. Bye bye. Sure. So now, what I t what That's I as far as I'm gonna say. I do right. So what I do is, <clears throat> obviously, we we make that call right. Quiet mm -hmm. on set. We tell everybody to shut the fuck up. Right. That's our job. Um, if the phone does go off, yes, I raise my voice, but I'm not. It isn't yelling, just because. Right. I'm not yelling. Yeah. Just it isn't saying, just because. Hey, whoever that idiot was that didn't put their fucking phone on silent. You're going to hear my voice, but I'm not going to single you out. Just put it on fucking silent, right? Um, but I'm Come not going to yell the same asshole. So I mean? the, the, 
if it's the same thing over and over again, that's a different story. This is because yeah, here's was. the thing: the story this that he the gave, the I didn't line. yell. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yell in that story. The story that I did yell, same set. Yeah. S- small house. Yeah. Every footstep, every chatter can be heard. Mm-hmm. We're shooting upstairs, holding his downstairs in the basement, and there was multiple presentations throughout the day to ask and require, like after. Right long breaks, whatever, like, right, hey, right, cool, right. we're back at it. I need everyone to put their, their phones on silent. Right. And we're running we're running behind. This is just one of those sets where we were always fucking running behind. Because... By the way, you guys never have walkies either. No. Which is stupid. It is. I'm sorry. So that, so that, that makes it difficult. Yeah. That makes it difficult. So again, with the, the voice raising, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. if the option is to run all the way downstairs and give an appropriate scolding or right. lean over after cut and be like, turn off them fucking phones. Yeah, it makes sense. At the top of my lungs. I get that. No, I get that. But it shook the house. Yeah. I said, listen, if it isn't fucking God calling you, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Turn it off. Do not answer it. We're fucking rolling. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Because you're making a choice of personal, like, because my phone's going to go off on set. I have other work coming. It like, happens. there's other right. communications, right. but it's not an immediate need. It's never, it never is. No. No. And nine times out of ten, any five times during this episode, and nine, nine times out of ten, at any job, they know. I've told them, "Hey, I'm on set. I'll respond when I can." Right, right. But so, I'll still get a text, and it's like, but, but if I'm on silent. My five year old daughter. If somebody is right. on set and and has made the decision that their personal life supersedes, yeah. Now I will interject on that. So. I have been in that situation, right? Now, this is a family emergency. The person, family emergencies aside, that's yeah, that's no, what one I... One in a million is but, different but than just, how he was disrespected. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I understand. What I'm saying is, though, is like I was notified ahead of time. Mm-hmm. She was like, hey, I don't have it on ring, but, but if this somebody might calls, oh, yeah. I have to take yeah, this phone. I, 100% yeah. please tell me that. Yeah, yeah. 100% yeah, please tell me that. they tell you that beforehand and you, their phone goes off, I'm 100%. Gonna be mad. I like, want to know. If that one, you're like, okay, everybody because, takes five. Because that, yeah. that's going back to, you know, the, the bad guy versus the, like, I'm, I, I truly take line. it like a dad, right? Like, yeah. I, I care. Yeah. Please come let me know of these things because we will work it out. I'm, I'm the one that has to know because right. if, if, if you're gone because something happened and, and I wasn't communicated with and you're needed for something, that completely fucks everything. Right. Right. No. I completely agree. And so that's, right, it all goes back to that line. It all mm-hmm. goes back to that fine fucking line that ADs have to walk, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we have to, we literally have to be the good guy, but we also have to be the bad guy. Right. right? We have to know when to, but you have to know when to play that card, well, right? 100%. You have to know when to play 100%. the bad guy card, right? 100%. That, now, I will you know, say... They're going to get pissed, but at the same time, they're the going to set... see why I made that decision. They're going to be like, oh, no, no, no. This makes sense. We're going to get behind Chris. And nine times out of ten, what happens is we've gone several days that have been great and some fucking hiccup happens, mm-hmm. right? And it's like something you can't control, right? And it's just like, guys, get behind me. We're going to do this. We'll knock this out. And Because you're a motivator as well. They get it. The right? ADs. And, and I'm, I'm going to kind of close this out. We've been at it for a little while. So, um... Uh, there was a good talk. There was a different, yeah, there was a different question I wanted to, to, to talk about, but this I think is important. So um, energy on set and the relation to the AD. Yeah. Um, what is the relation to the AD and energy on set? Energy yeah. up, bitches. It's huge. Right? It's huge. Let's be real. Like, if you walk on set and you're fucking all somber and you just, whoa, 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 right. If you're speaking problems uh, are, at yeah, call time, yeah. 15 minutes before call yeah. time, and you're already pissing and moaning, yeah. you set the tone. Everyone else now thinks our day is fucked. Yeah, you got to think about it. Like, you are the leader, yeah. right? Essentially, to the crew, you are the leader. Correct. It's not the director. To the crew, they don't answer the director. They, they do answer not. They to rarely you. speak to the director. Right. They answer to you. So, at the end of the day, if you're bitching already, they're just going to be like, well, this day's fucked. Yeah. Right? You know, yep. the energy already, the tone is already set, Right. You have to come in with... Hello, how is everybody doing it? you got to be a motivational speaker attitude, all day. Get ready to get people up. Now, mm-hmm. granted, things change. Obviously, we do. Yeah. Our energy does get low. It happens. Yeah, I'll admit I've had bad days. We're human, right? But at the same time, we have to be able to shift that and get the crew behind it. Right. Right? 
My I hate favorite saying is my this, brother. but we are kind of manipulators to an to an extent. That was a right? secret. To an extent, that is a secret. But we don't. I so don't, I see. Here's malicious. the thing. I don't see it's it as malicious. no. And no. My manipulation is one of, one of my brothers in creativity, Kamal Smith. His favorite thing. He says energy up. But my favorite time to hear him say it is when he's tired. He's like. He means it, but he's like, okay, everybody, en- energy up. Like, you can yeah. feel him Self- trying. Self-motivated. But yeah. that's so much more motivating to me than when he's actually like, energy up, everybody. Like, when yeah. he's, when I feel that he's fight, a- I'm like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. rally for that motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's another thing that I always do, right, is that if we've had a hard fucking day and I have PAs, right, because you should have PAs. That's, should. That's part of the job, right, should. production department. Um... I'll I'll send a, if my G and E's been busting their ass, or any team for that matter, right? They've been busting their ass every day, all day. It's been hard, right? G and E, I'll be like, "Hey, go go to the gaffer, ask him what fucking beer everybody likes, right?" And I'll fucking out of my own money, right. I will buy them a fucking twenty four pack or twelve, whatever I can. Mm-hmm. Right? If hopefully it's not yep. some craft ass yep. beer. At right? least enough for everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. Taste has changed with yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's not some craft ass beer. Well, because you got you get you're but... handing on that responsibility. You can't get people drunk and then pack and leave. You know it's, exactly. Yeah. But you it's know what I'm saying? Sense. Like, but no, like it's but enough that... to have one or two beers. Which yeah. Most G. I'm sorry, G and E. Uh, two beers is nothing, right? That's oh like, no, that's no, like but you get home. enough that's to have a, each of them have one or two, yeah. and that's and it. Doesn't is, matter the brand, like, even if yeah, I don't drink it, tab. I'm gonna yeah. accept and be like, thank you. It's, it's like or like wardrobe and makeup, right? They wanted a bottle of wine. I bought them a bottle of wine. I said, yeah. I said, ladies, this is on me. You know what I mean? Thank you for your hard work. You know what I mean? Like it's stuff like that that just really makes it just brings the morale up in the crew and helps yeah. them get mm-hmm. behind you, right? Because that's the goal. That's our job, right? Yeah. We the crew has to be behind us. If they're not behind us, we're not making our day. No, absolutely. They the crew is one hundred percent the backbone of production. Yeah. And without a solid crew who's lifted up and ready to rock, yeah, it's just gonna be a slag. Yeah. In the, any of you actors out there like I don't get enough confidence, come work on G and E and in crew for a minute and have people not even acknowledge you. Yeah. And see if you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, literally, literally feel like How's your like ego now, house. buddy? How yeah. bruised? Yeah. What, what did you, you do? You you are doing a kick ass job. What do you do? I'll tell you right now. They schedule me six months in advance that. if oh, I'm Jesus. lucky. And then if you say, oh, I can't that Sunday, my six months of planning just went out the window for your Sunday. Okay. No. Um, Quinn, you've been kind of quiet. Are there any questions that you might have yes, uh, for ladies. Quinn here? Yeah, so this isn't a question for me, but um, I'm just curious. If you just got out of film school or just got out of high school, what would you do if you wanted to become an AD? If you wanted to become an in AD. In today's climate, in today's film set. Interesting. Uh, well. Why would you want to be an AD? PA is my first <laughs> if answer. you really oh. hate yourself. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you for saying that. That's <laughs> yeah, if you want to get on the list of uh, careers most likely to commit suicide. Yeah. What well, path would you well, want to take? to have a heart attack at 60. <laughs> you know, Dentist, AD. Yeah. There you go. So, That's the list. But honestly, though, it's really not that. I mean. We're we're over exaggerating to some extent. I agree. I agree. I, I love the job. If you truthfully enjoy being an AD, I agree. Some um, people and you enjoy for the it. idea of logistics and handling puzzles, puzzle make you know puzzle problem solving. Mm-hmm. Like you're great for an AD. You're great under pressure. Yep, yeah. because yeah. pressure is a thing. Um, well, like then there's people. I'm a great problem solver, but I'm not AD candidacy. Like for no. me, I could do the job. I'm not interested. Yeah, but I mean, I don't have. It's a different that kind of mindset puzzle. that you right. guys have. It's, it's right. just it's a different, different yeah. kind of puzzle. Yeah. And you so, know? like, the reality is, though, like, <clears throat> what I would suggest, if you really want to be an AD, your first goal is to go be a PA. Like yep. that's reality. You Copy. Get into the production world. Like, so you want to be anything? You can be a PA. Get into the production world. You want to be? A, you go into PA. Then find you, out how to you, branch. And you hug into your you hug into your AD so and really all, embrace and, and I think we've talked about this before uh, on this show, but really embrace being a PA. Yeah, to to think of it as just a throwaway job is a mistake to you because you're asked to be there because you're essential. You may not think the jobs that you're asked to do it's are that work. pivotal. It's grunt work as like, a PA. But understand if that that you see somebody like I would like to do that fucking shadow them and they will that's what you're I, gonna do other things use the opportunity to open so your much. eyes 
use the opportunity to open your eyes to everything that's happening on set and well, absorb and, and self-teach and, yourself by observation. And the reality with that, too, is, is yes, it's grunt work, but do it. Do it to your best ability, because guess what? That little five minutes of the gaffer saying, hey, can I get a water? And you running off to grab a water and bringing that to the gaffer mm -hmm. means a lot to that person. Yeah. You may and think it's it notice, doesn't, but it does. If you do it with hustle, right. that's going to get you places. That's it's going to get you places. You work hard. You work hard. We need You're people. Hungry. We're yeah. always looking for that one town and be like, oh, did you see that motherfucker this last week? Yeah. Get his number. Yeah. I mean... You know, oh yeah! If you're a hardworking PA, you get noticed. You catch my eye, I I make sure I have a way to contact you. And if nobody else is calling you, where's where's that motherfucker? Yes. we need that motherfucker right. for that job. But your step up is PA, then you go to key PA. This motherfucker right yep. Right. Then you go to yep. second second. Uh, what's important about the key PA is the organization. Like it's a, now you have one department that you need to manage to give you that opportunity right. to do that. Like it's it's a it's a the quickest path to a. a "Quote unquote department head," yeah. Um, but you really have to treat the job with sincerity because you have to understand the relevance of you it. You have to care. You have to care, and you have to really show interest. Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> you go from PA to key PA to second, second to then second to mm -hmm. then first. Now, granted, that's on a big job, right? Right. But on these little little smaller projects, you can jump off and go be a first. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, as long as you understand the job and you've talked with some bigger firsts. That understand the role, right? Right, and can explain it to you and show you what to do, and some that are willing to train. Yeah. Just saying, because that's important, right? I'm sorry, like the one thing I cannot stand is egos when it comes to being an AD or a director or gaffer or whatever or the anybody, fuck you are, right? Anybody. Get your head out of this project and get on the train. If somebody wants to learn, fucking teach Share them, hundred percent. Right? Because guess what? That person could fathead. that person could call you for a job, hundred percent, right? Because you've brought them up and you've yep. shown them the right way, and yeah. they've exceed they've they have excelled, right? Mm -hmm. So that's and, my thing. Like, yeah, in my decade in the industry, there's never been a time where I have looked over anybody under me because you never know when that person's calling you for your next gig. Yeah. yeah. It's don't, bigger than any gig you've yeah, ever had. Yeah, don't be afraid. Like, and that's my thing, right? Now, granted, and I'll tell you this right now, there are shows that I've been on that literally I, I don't have time. I, I can't. Like, as much as you want to ask me questions and everything, I'll talk to you at the end Understood. of the day. Understood. Read the room. We talked about this yeah. last uh, on the last we episode. Did. Yeah. Read, the, read the room. I'll talk to you at the end of the day. Yes. Right? It's exactly but, what we said. Hit but, me back. Yeah, that's a that. great yeah. question for tomorrow. I got to, like... Yeah. But and we, we stress right the fact that um, your approach on that, your answer may not be pleasurable to hear. Sometimes but, I'm going to respond don't take to you like an asshole. But if you know I'm not an asshole... Take it for the situation, not the response. Right, because there Correct. are times that I literally, there are times that it's not me being an asshole. It's just me saying, hey, I'm sorry, I don't have time. I have to, I have yeah. to handle this. Like, it, it is what it is. You have to move. Yep. Like, we're moving a set. Steering a ship. As much as we want to train. A lot of our training, too, as far as ADs, to answer this as well, pay attention to your AD. Yes. See what they're doing. Yes. Watch them. Learn from what they are doing. Yeah. Right? Right or wrong. Because Yeah, because some of the training, too, some of the training is that it's mm -hmm. just watching and just seeing what they do and being like, Oh, okay, well, if I don't really like the way they handled that, I'd rather, I'd do this if I was them. You know yeah. I mean? And train and take that to your own, make it your own. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've had, I mean, I've had two or three ADs that are UPMs now that are fucking, they were second ADs that they came under me and they've all gone fucking union. Right. Mm -hmm. One of them calls me several times a year and is like, for the love of God, please just go union so I can fucking hire you. <laughs> right. And I just haven't done it. Right. Because I'm just like, I just, that's not, that's not really where I want to be in the DJ Sure. It's a, it's a personal choice. Right. So that's a whole thing. Yeah. But I've had like, that struggle myself for the last, yeah. But it's that whole thing, right? So like, the incentives less Michigan. I, I was trained like, them. They saw what I can do. Right. They love what I do. And now they call. And now they're calling me. Yeah. They're saying, "Hey, we, you got to join, dude. Like, I got, I want to hire you, but you got to join, mm -hmm. right?" And so, you got to pay your dues. That's the biggest thing, right? Train Jeez. the people that want to be trained, right? And you, and if you're wanting to be, if you're if you really want to be in the film industry, work your ass off. 
that's yep. that's to anybody. That's My not biggest just hundred percent. Any yeah, role, any work position. your fucking ass off. Be there for the love yeah. of it. Don't yeah. try to quantify it. It's yeah. not an hourly wage. And quite sure, honestly, you can boil it down, but you're wasting your time. You quite honestly, it's like not why you're here. I'm just gonna toot somebody that's sitting here. Right, Quinn is a perfect example of that. Oh, amazing. I'm just saying, like, dude came on, came in, just said, "What can I do? How can I yeah. help? What do you need?" You yeah. know what I mean? He's not afraid to ask that question. And if you're told nothing, then cool, I'll go find something else to do. And mm-hmm. that's what he does. You're right? smart enough to figure out, like, find the whole, f- f- see a need, fill a need, you know? And you, you have know? to be intuitive somewhat, as a PA, especially. Like, I agree. If you walk up to your AD and your AD says, hey, I don't have anything for you. Okay, cool. Let me go see what the UPM needs. Surely you can see say what I should never have to ask. doesn't have time to say. Yeah. Right. I should never have to ask asking. a PA to change the garbage. Mm-hmm. A PA should see that that garbage needs changing. Absolutely. Fucking change it. If you don't know where the bags even are, the bag itself. Ask. People leave shit lying around. Yeah, it's not an. It's not a glorious job. It's, it's not, not a glorious not. job. But understand that that is the the most realistic baseline learning position that you can be in on a set. Yep. If you can't you pick can up learn. other people's you water really bottles, can. how the fuck are you gonna learn to pick up your own? Well, gentlemen, thank you uh, all for. Hanging out with us. Uh, Quinn, Joe, anything else you guys want to ask Mr. Chris? No. No? Quinn? I mean, it's a big question. I don't know. If do it. Do it. Do it. Um, now like, or never, bitch. I guess. I guess. I, what, like, so what, what is the deal? If you're in Michigan, is it better to be union or is it not? Like, I really don't know. Well, right now, without uh, incentives, definitely not. Uh, yeah, well, I mean. Depends on what depends on what you're talking about though like, yeah because your union would be different and the question is more loaded than even you thought it was yeah so like that's why i was hesitant no no, no it, it's a nothing, great question there's nothing yeah. so we i think sleep i on think that and that can be I the think topic the, of our next ooh, i think a I good well like i mean that. i mean i'm not union i don't know that i have any any places to speak you don't need it, to be union regardless too. regardless i well, think I, to answer I'll the question for three hours about that shit i think to answer the question um you should really consider why you have interest in the union and what you think it will provide for you. And then look at your region, wherever it is that you live and see what that offers. In some regions, the presence of the union isn't large enough to benefit you and it may not ultimately pay off. Whereas in other places it may be pop and hopping and you know, you got to weigh how that, because you may be now in a sea of one in a million. Five IATS guys in Michigan, or you going to move to? There are York benefits. I'm I'm not a I'm not no. a I'm not a union. Yeah, so there are there are benefits. It's so like the I think it's a personal. Is, I think it's a personal. Yeah, it is a personal. And it's choice. like the reality sure. is like if I went into the DGA as a first, I'm not going in knowing that they're going to offer me jobs because they're not. I'm on right. a, I'm on a list. Give you jobs. Right. I'm on a list, sure but that doesn't paid. mean I'm going to get called. Right. What I am on, what I what I would be joining DGA for as a first is for benefits. You get your health, you get you get all that, you get a really really nice. I mean, everything's nice, yeah. right? It's great, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get jobs from joining the union. As no, a you still have to farm first. your own shit, right? They right. make sure you get paid and you're taken care of. Exactly. They Which don't get you shit. I'm going to tell you right now, that's great. Like. Because they do stand up for you. They you make sure whatever course. you get yourself, yeah, of course. And you're taken care of. How, but you have to get yourself that shit. Yeah. And they how, take how care of How real is it that once you're union, you can't really do other, like non-union jobs? Is that real or is that more just like so not real? So that's, uh, that's Depends if they catch it. Well, <laughs> it's not just that. Like, they're like G&E wise, camera wise. That's where not, They're not in. as crazy about it, right? They don't care as much because and if you don't report it they'll never fucking know right now as far as like dga that's a different story like i if i join dga as a first i cannot if my name gets on a call sheet as a first ad on a non-union job i will lose my Mm -hmm. dga dga is one of the tougher like uh famously there have been offer more or i I think it's better so they don't want to like really no i think it might be just different bylaws it's just the way mm. that union structured. Yeah, simply. Yeah. Um, you know, directors have left the DGA based on, like, for example, uh, we spoke a lot about Robert Rodriguez tonight. Robert Rodriguez dropped out of the DGA to do Sin City because he insisted on having Frank Miller there as co-director. Yep. DGA does not permit anything to have two directors. It's one. 
the Coen brothers. The Coen brothers co-direct, but on paper, one's a producer, one's a director. Yeah. Because huh. they can't share so, the title. So in that share. instance, right, like if I was, I'm not saying I'll ever do this, but if that was the case, I would have to be slated as like a UPM on union, yeah. on union jobs. Right. Right. So you can take other, because a UPM is not in the Directors Guild at all. Correct. I would have to be America, a different. I would just have to be a different yeah. job. So, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, there's plenty of bonuses. We're gonna say our goodbyes. Hang around. And good things to join the union. Yeah, and well, you a reason to join the union. Oh, it's just sense. more of a, like Brad said, it's more about. Is it something driving you to that? Is there a reason for it? You know what I mean? Like, because if there's not, maybe hold off. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But if there's a reason. And you're like, fuck yeah, I want to join. Like, if you're in Atlanta, fucking join the goddamn union. You're, you're right. going to work every day as a GD. Right. Yeah. I would suggest come back. It might be a good thing. Give it yeah. a year for yeah. any for any person that's that's interested in looking into the union. I would look at the individual websites for the unions themselves, because um, SAG has a website, DGA has a website, IATSE has a website. Um, and if you're do listening, some, check out MIFA. Do some research if you're on Michigan. If you're yeah, Michigan. yeah, Michigan Film Incentive. Association. Yeah. Um, take a look at, at the, the websites because those will answer the direct uh, questions for bylaws and, and there's a lot of different um, aid that you can get in joining and what the process it would be. Um, DGA offers like a training program and so forth. But check out where that would individually better. I would start there. And then, yeah, you, you can look at your state and see how that goes and, and see whether or not through that website you'll find the locals and you can ask those questions. Absolutely. Um, so, Chris, thank you again for joining us. Um, if you could uh, let people know where they can uh, reach out to you if they have any questions. Yeah. Um, Chris Warren, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Instagram, it's CWAR54. Two, two R's, right? Yeah, two R's, thank you. Uh, and then on Facebook, Christopher Warren, look for the um, Hannibal Lecter mask on the front. That's me. Uh, yeah, and then... Just reach out if you have any questions. And Message then uh, or... anything uh, anything you want to promote? Anything you want to put out there into the ether? Something yeah, that we should watch? Yeah, so there's a couple movies coming out pretty soon. Um, one is Imperatus. It was actually one of Tom Sizemore's last movies. Mm, okay. Um, R.I.P. Um, he, fantastic, did an amazing job. He's won a lot of awards at festivals. Oh, excellent. I'm really, really excited about Imperatus? it. Yeah, yeah. It's a horror film. Um, and then Sunlight which is another one that's coming soon. Uh, also one of Tom's last movies. Uh, really, really, really cool story. Really, really, really awesome. And where I've met all you. Like, that's people, right. Fun like, project. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that's two that I would definitely push out right now. And Imperatus is available now? No, it's coming soon. Coming soon. soon. So we're looking soon. for it. We're looking yeah, for it's in distro right now. So. Okay. So we're... And Sunlight both coming soon. Coming yeah, soon. Nice, and uh, don't forget that all the shine is coming out, which you VIT'd. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's true. I'm not really sure what the release uh, is on that, but still coming uh, soon. it is still coming soon. Yeah, so all the shine, we all we all put How our hands soon? in on that I one, too. Know. Yeah, and there's there's several others that I just can't talk about right now because I really don't have enough info. But That's also, fine. I just can't. Really That's fine. Yeah, well, I don't, we don't have time. You can let us. You can always let NBA. us know. Oh, I gotta pee. Oh, thanks. You can always <laughs> let us know, and, and we can you, we can make our posts and stuff. Absolutely. That as well. Absolutely. Quinn, uh, where can people reach you? Instagram Quinn Twins dot McLaren's would like a car. Um, on there, there's a. I have another page in my bio about like all the BTS I work on and stuff like that. Um, What's it yeah. called? Alex and Film or something like that. Just Alex Film is my middle name's Alexander. So. No, right on, Joseph. His AXL film was actually pretty fucking hilarious. Oh, I, I follow all of Quinn's social shit. I'm I'm a Quinn uh, whore. Chaotic underscore artisan for Instagram or just my birth god given name. Joseph Sheldon Quick on the, any other thing. Joey oh, Shane. Yeah, so yeah so definitely so look that up when Sheldon. it comes to like <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Sheldon. People you might know. Don't look me up on there because you know, horrible fucking mugshots. And uh, you can reach me on uh, Instagram. You can follow me at Beeford Clark. Um, and if uh, you guys have any of your own stories or any questions that you want to ask us uh, that we can ask our peers and our friends like Christopher, uh, we would be more than happy to uh, field those for you as well. And uh, Chris, I'm imagining 
you'll probably join us again at some point. Oh, I hope so. I'd, Jeff, love, I'd love to be here. Yeah. Hey, Excellent. if you're yeah. still in town when we do the next one, there we go. Giddy up. There we All go. right, everyone. So thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you next time. Yeah.